Hey there, this is Sean McMahon. Thanks so much for listening to my podcast and thanks for supporting the ministry by lending your ears, your minds, hearts, all that good stuff. Don't be afraid to share this here message with a friend or a family member, even a stranger. Have at. It's not like it's going to bite. These messages are recorded live at the Community Baptist Church of Gayhead and Aquina on Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, and the good old U.S. of A. If you're ever in town for a visit or suddenly find yourself shipwrecked on the southwest side of our lovely little island, climb up the clay cliffs and come on down to our little old chapel for our weekly 10 a.m. service. No need to wear anything special, just bring your special self. May God bless you. appeared to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Mary was greatly troubled in his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. So the angel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How can this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Look, even Elizabeth, your relative, has conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it happen to me according to your word. And the angel left. The word of the Lord. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. And uh, Advent is an ancient tradition where the church, we, put ourselves in the story of Jesus' birth and the events leading up to it. And it's a season of introspection. It's a season of reflection. It's a season of preparation. So it's got a nice slow pace, just like the weather slowed us all down. Um, Our great example of introspection, reflection, and preparation is Mary, the mother of Jesus in this story. She's kind of the star of the Christmas story. (laughs) The story begins when the angel appears to Mary and and greets her with the famous words of the rosary. If you ever uh, did the rosary, if anyone was Catholic, I know some people were Catholic, brought up. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Those are words that Christians have repeated over and over and over again for thousands of years. They've been echoed into the ether. Well, Mary's response to this, because she was a real person, Hearing these words for the first time, and the first time they were ever uttered, she is troubled. She's troubled. And trouble, trust me, that's the life of the introvert. That's the meat and potatoes of introspection right there. Trouble. It's something that every believer is called to feel. Trouble within. And here's why. It's because every Christian is called to a life of repentance. And that means we are to consider our inner state. It's a It's an inner way. And as the song goes, we uh, see what condition our condition is in. It's not that fun. Sometimes it can cause trouble. That's what repentance is like. It causes inner trouble. But the real trouble is not from the act of repentance. It's actually from the purpose. The purpose. The purpose of repentance is answering God's call, right? He calls you first. You don't know why. You just get a curiosity and you start asking, you know, what's this life I'm going to live? Who am I living it for? You start wondering. That's the beginning of repentance, turning to God. Repentance isn't just purely about looking at yourself in the mirror and looking for the shortcomings. It's not about self-criticism, right? It's not, it's not 
the kind of self-criticism that, for instance, my, uh, my Nana, this is very fresh, but my Nana had to escape the USSR, right? These are called self, self-criticism sessions where you confess your sins against the party or against the social group. And, and that's how you uh, escape the gulag, right? That's not, what, that's not what this is about. That's not what repentance is about. That's not what it's about. It's about turning to God, right? It's about turning away from yourself and turning towards God when he's calling you. And true repentance bears fruit, okay? It bears fruit. It doesn't punish you. It bears fruit. It gives you sustenance. But when you're called to repentance, nonetheless, it has these nice fruits. It's going to be troubling. It's going to trouble you. Okay? Just like Gabriel greeted Mary with love and high honors, but it troubled her. Because that's a troubling thing. When, uh, when you're going about your life journey, and then the voice of God calls you, and he greets you with high honors. He does indeed, right? When the most, when the most high calls you, he's calling you to be his child. To be his one of his sons and daughters. Join my family. He's going to show you a higher purpose for your life too. A very noble, radically noble purpose. He's going to show you all of that. He wants you to reign with him. He's like, you know, i got a kingdom and i got a place for you at that table. At the Knights of the Round Table, so to speak. That's going to be troubling. And another thing that's going to happen is he's going to come into your life with this high calling. And then someone that we like to call the enemy is going to come right in between you with a mirror. I say, don't look at him. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. I want you to be troubled by what you see in the mirror. I don't want you to be troubled by looking at the Most High. I don't want you to look at him. I want you to look at yourself. That's the that's the type of trouble you can get yourself into when you walk in repentance. Okay, and that's only natural. But like Mary, you don't want to get stuck in this trouble zone, right? And look at what happens next. Says she's troubled, and then she wonders. She feels wonder. She feels awe. She feels wonder. So don't focus on the trouble that the enemy wants you to feel. That's designed to uh, make you flee introspection. It's designed to make you look at yourself and not like what you see, and then never want to look again. Right? It's a distraction. But if you stay, if you stay with introspection, focused on God, right? You can move on to the next phase. You can move on to wonder. You can move from trouble to wonder. Because you're like, who is calling me here? Who is this? What is this voice I'm hearing? Calling me to a higher purpose. Calling me to something more beautiful than I can, I can explain. Nothing I've ever seen before, right? That's the kind of wonder that you're called to, just like Mary. Because again, he's called you to be seated, enthroned in heavenly places. He's called you not just to obey Christ the King, but to be adopted into his family so you can call Jesus your brother. Okay, big claims. God is calling you to repentance. He wants you to remember you are made in his image. So when you turn to him, you see not your own reflection, but you want to reflect him. You want to reflect on God. You see, this is your life. This is your eternal life. This is the source of all this goodness. Okay? Feel the wonder. Feel the wonder when you look at your creator. Okay? That's what Mary felt. Now, the angel also told Mary, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Okay? That's one of the most used phrase uh, words in the gospel. Jesus said it all the time. Don't be afraid. The journey you're on in life, life, just plain life, everyday life, that is a spiritual journey that you are on. Right? We all know that. You can feel it. It's not just about what happens in your day to day. It's about what you feel. It's about thoughts that pop into your head, right? Well, life is scary enough when you're just driving in your car, but once you get those feelings involved, once you get those thoughts involved, it can get scary. We can suffer just because our minds make us suffer, right? It doesn't, you can have a wonderful life. Your mind alone can make you suffer. Your heart alone can make you suffer, okay? That is scary. The angel says to Mary, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Why? Because God is asking you to be a tabernacle, to be a dwelling place for the presence of God on earth. He's asking the same of us, of every one of us. And he isn't just going to heal you, right? He wants to heal the world through you. So it's, it's not just that he's calling you to, to make your life better. He wants you to make other people's lives better. And that's what he intends to do. He intends to establish 
a continuum of blessing through every person, okay? He wants you to be his hands and feet. And he wants you to be the very place where heaven and earth meet, okay? As they did in the womb of Mary, okay? So that's what gives us cause for reflection, these sacred mysteries. And Mary paused to reflect and she asked, well, how can I become pregnant? I'm a virgin. That is a very, very good question. Quite logical. My daughter wouldn't understand it, but we all did, right? Okay, that's a good question. Well, for very different reasons, we need to pause and reflect and ask a similar question, right? How can God have such a high calling for me? I'm a mere mortal, right? I'm a mere flesh and bones. I screw up a lot. How am I supposed to interface with the creator, right? Well, I can imagine trying to improve myself. Maybe I can get a little better, clean up my life a bit. He says, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect so I could work on my perfection a bit, okay? But I'm being told I can be a part of his family. I can enjoy a relationship with him as if he's my papa, as if I'm his kid, right? I can reign in his kingdom like some kind of king. It says we can be a royal priesthood, okay? Drink deeply of the water of life at no cost. There's no cost to this. How could this possibly be? That is our version of asking, how can I be pregnant since I'm a virgin? Basically, I have not done the work to have God dwell in me, right? I have not done the work, okay? But that is exactly God's calling for us. That's how it works. It's for this purpose that he sent his son Jesus, clothed in the flesh of Mary, Okay, the star of the Christmas Advent season to die for the sins of the world so that the cost of our imperfections may be paid as we approach the throne of the Father and come to the table. So when you kneel down to pray, right, when you want to have a conversation with your Father, do you get distracted? Do you get distracted? Do you wonder if you're prepared to approach God? Do you wonder, is he going to hear me? I had a rough week. Maybe I'm not too proud of myself, right? Is he gonna hear me? Is there something I should do? Should I wait? Is my prayer gonna be good enough? You know, all that stuff. Do you hear a voice that says, well, actually, you know, you can walk that old lady across the street. Maybe if you just focus on that, you'll find your inner best self. You can lift that up to God, right? We do think these thoughts. We do wonder about this, you know? But God wants us to ignore these thoughts. Again, he wants us to look at him, not ourselves. We lift ourselves up, right? We lift up our hearts, but we don't gaze at ourselves. We, we, you know, we do it like we're on a date with our loved one. We don't talk about ourselves. We focus on the other person at the table, right? Because Christ is our purification. This is what the gospel is about. When man tries to kneel before God, and the enemy jumps in the middle with that big old mirror trying to distract you, he doesn't want you to reflect on God. He wants you to look at your own reflection. He'll say, don't look at God, look at yourself. You're unworthy of him. Get lost, run around like a headless chicken, trying to figure out how you're gonna develop a relationship with this perfect God, right? Or just give up. That's not what it's about. <clears throat> Covered in the blood of Christ, you stand on the promises of God and you say these words from Romans 8. Nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears today, today, or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. No power in the sky or in the earth below. Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, after we reflect on these, after a period of introspection, we reflect on this love that we're receiving, well, then we prepare. We prepare just as Mary prepared to receive her son. And only one thing is required. Just say yes. Just say yes. She says, may it happen to me according to your word. May it happen to me. May it just happen to me. Okay? 
So you don't have to run around like a headless chicken trying to figure out how to prepare yourself for God. That's not how it works. God isn't saying to you, may you happen to me, do some stuff, happen to me. No, that's not, that's not how it works. We just say, you happen to me. We're in God's world, right? Everything is happening to us. We're not, we're not happening to, to God. You know what I'm saying? We are passive in a way. That's what we have to do. We just say, okay, here I am. Here I am. It happened to me. <laughs> okay? God's going to do the thing. And that's how you prepare yourself. You just say yes. You just say amen. I want to tell you something about Mary. Something about Mary. I want to tell you something about Mary that was very special. <laughs> um, so we've seen at first how Mary was introspective, and then she moved from trouble to wonder, became reflective. Before she could prepare to receive Christ, she had to ask a question. She had to say, how is this going to happen? How is this going to happen? And Gabriel tells her something extraordinary. The angel says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the Most High will overshadow you. Overshadow you. It's, it's a, a very vivid picture he's painting. But it's a picture that's been painted before elsewhere in the Bible. And it's only painted uh, with regards to one thing. And that is the Ark of the Covenant. The dwelling place of God uh, in the Old Testament. It says in Exodus 40... That the glory cloud of the presence of God himself overshadowed the tent of meeting. That's the exact language. Overshadowed and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The brilliance and the holiness of it was so glorious that Moses couldn't even go into the ark when it was overshadowed. When God overshadows the ark, he fills it with his presence. He is there fully. Now our good lady Mary would be overshadowed in the same manner. In precisely this way. Just like the ark. Just like the ark. This is why for millennia Christians have called Mary the ark of God. This is why in the book of Revelation and what we just read, when the temple of God in heaven is open and it says the ark of his covenant appears in heaven, it's described as a woman giving birth to a child who will rule the nations. That is right there in Revelation. The temple of heaven is open. John sees the ark inside. The ark is Mary. Says we've been given the spirit of adoption, right? This is what Christianity is all about. We say, God, you're my papa. You're my papa. And we can call Jesus our brother. Jesus also says to his disciple, behold your mother. Look at her. Look at her. Look at Mary. So this is what Advent is about. Let's look at Mary. Behold our mother this Advent season. She's part of our family. She's part of our family. As Christians... Would it be perfect as our Father is perfect? And we know that when Christ the Son appears, we will be like Him. So let's also behold our mother. Mary is our example too. You're called to be an ark, just like her. You're called to be overshadowed and filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of the Creator, the Holy Spirit of this mystery that is keeping us alive right now. And the Holy Spirit that animates the mystery beyond that we cannot see. We are called to be overshadowed and filled by that Spirit. Now, the Spirit declared to the prophet Isaiah that God does not dwell in houses made by hands. And the Spirit declared to King Solomon that even as he was building this first temple, he says, even the heavens can't hold you. He acknowledged this house isn't going to hold you, but even the heavens can't hold you, let alone a temple. The New Testament of Christ declares that the tabernacle, the ark of God, is with men. God dwells in you. He says, I will dwell in you. I will dwell in my people. Well, that first happened at Pentecost, right? The Spirit comes down upon the first Christians at Pentecost. But guess who it came upon first, a long time before? It came on Mary, right? And it would not have come upon them at Pentecost if Mary hadn't first been overshadowed and filled by the Holy Spirit, if she hadn't first said amen, amen to that good tidings. So let's compare and contrast for a second. Mary was alone. Mary was all alone when this happened. She wasn't like the disciples in the upper room who were all together waiting on the promise of Jesus. They'd seen Jesus. They'd seen that he was a miracle worker. They had plenty of reasons to trust in what he was saying. They'd heard his preaching. They'd seen him 
raise folks from the dead, and they even saw him rise from the dead and get carried up into heaven. They saw it all, and they're saying, okay, well, we're going to wait around for this Holy Spirit he told us about. That was not the case for Mary. She was all alone. She was troubled. She was scared. She didn't have anything to hold on to like the disciples did. She knew the prophecies. There's a song that says, Mary, did you know? She knew. She knew what the prophecies were. She didn't know it was going to be her. She didn't know she was going to be asked to carry this, this burden. She didn't know what Jesus was like. She didn't know what it would be like to carry a child, let alone the Messiah, to be burdened with giving birth to this man that she knew would have to suffer for a living. What would it feel like? What would it demand of her now that the angel of God had dropped this on her very doorstep while she was alone? Alone. This is her dark night of the soul, right? This is all of us. We're all facing this. Alone. We don't know what God's really called us to. What it's going to look like for us personally, right? This process of introspection, reflection, and preparation. What is our walk of repentance going to lead to? What's going to happen when we walk in this way? We don't know. And that way we're alone just like Mary. We're all walking alone, right? That's why we're here together to support one another in this. But as they say, that road you walk, you walk alone. Once you say amen, what's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What's it actually going to be like when you wake up in the morning and you decide to commit your life to this? What's going to be demanded of you? This is your journey, yours to discover. But you have a great example in Mary, who went before us and she was the first to say, just yes, yes. May it happen to me according to your will. So this Advent season, whether you're just starting your walk of faith, or whether you're well on your way, my elders, consider these lessons from the story of Mary in introspection and in reflection and preparation for our Lord's indwelling presence in your heart, right? It begins with the words, amen. 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 All right. Thank you for listening to the Sean McMahon Podcast. Visit SeanSellickMcMahon.com for more information about his ministry. For more about Sean's music, please visit WorkmanSong.com.